on this sheet. Let me read to you Rambam, Perak, Gimel, Halacha Aleph, in Hilfos Teshuvah. Kol Echad Ve'echad Bebnei Ha'adam, every single human being, Yeshlo Zechuyos Ve'avonos, has merits and sins. Mi Shezechuyos Sav, Yeseros Ha'avonos Sav, Someone whose merits outnumber his sins, tzaddik. He is defined as a tzaddik, a righteous person. Mish avonosav yeseros halzahu yosav. Someone whose uh, sins outweigh his merits, rosha. Mechzah and mechzah, it's evenly balanced. Benam, that person's in between. He's neither tzaddik nor rosha. V'chein hamadina, and likewise when it comes to a country. Im hayu zechuyos kol yoshveha merubos al avonosehem. If the merits of a country outweighed, uh, uh, excuse me, if the merits of all of its uh, inhabitants outnumbered their sins, harei zotzadekes, it is a righteous country. And if their sins were the more, Harezu Risha, it's a wicked country. And so too when it comes to the entire world. Individuals, um, countries, and the entire world are judged as to whether they are Sadikim or Rishoyim, and it depends on what's what outnumbers what? What's more numerous, the Zechuyos or the Averos? Okay, but let's start, with, let's focus on the very first sentence that the Rambam says in this halacha. Kol echad ve'echad mebnei ha'adam, every single human being, yesh lo zechuyos ve'avonos, has merits and sins. This seems to be contradicted by a brysa that's brought down in two places in Shas, in Babavasar Daf Yud Zion, and in Shabbos Daf Nun Let's read the brysa as it appears in Shabbos, and we will look at Rashi's comment on the brysa. Let's see. You see this, uh, the, the, right above the Rambam in your sheets, you have this Gemara in Shabbos, and in the middle of, you know, the narrower column, right in the middle there, you have a mesave, right? We'll look at the whole context in a moment, but first let's just focus on this one brysa. Arboma mesu be'et yoshel nachos. You see where I'm reading from? Okay. There are four people who died because of the advice of the snake. The Abelheim, they are the following. Binyamin ben Yaakov, Binyamin, the son of Yaakov, one of the twelve tribes, the Amram Avi Moshe, Amram the father of Moshe, the Yishai Avi David, Yishai the father of David, the Kilov ben David, and Kilov the son of David. All right, let's look at the Rashi there. The Et Yoshel Nachash, they died. Through the, the advice of the snake. So, etio means atzaso, but atzaso shall nachosh. That means through the advice of the snake, shehishi lechava, by which he misled chava, velo bechet acher, and not on account of any other sin, shelo chatu, because they did not sin. So, you see this Gemara, and like I said, we'll see the context in a moment. This Gemara is saying that there were four people who died not because of their own sin, but because of the snake having misled Chava, because of that ancient sin. So, how can the Rambam say, and look at the Loshan again, Kol Echod Ve'echod Mebnei Ha'adam, every single human being, Yesh Lo Zechuyos Ve'avonus, has Merits and sins. We see there were four human beings who didn't have any sins. 
Okay, so to answer that question, let's learn the Gemara and Shabbos in its entirety. Rabbi, it, yes. How does um, how does this brisa show that they didn't have any sins? Okay, because the brisa says that they died through the advice of the snake, and Rashi says that means they had died because of the way the snake misadvised Baba, and he says, "Velo bechet acher, not for any other sin, shelo chatu." because they didn't sin. So you see, there, it's possible that a human being should be free of sin. And the Ramah says it isn't. Okay, so let's look at the entire Gemara. Oh, and remind me that I should have put on this source sheet the Tosvos also, but I'll tell you outside what the Tosvos says. Omar of Ami. <coughs> see, the beginning of the Gemara in Shabbos. Amar Rav Ami, Rav Ami says, Ein Misa below Chet, the Ein Yisurin below Avo. There is no sin without, excuse me, there's no death without sin, and no suffering without transgression. All right, Chet uh, and Avon are two different words for sin. They refer to two types of sin. I couldn't tell you offhand. I mean, Chet is certainly inclu includes Shogeg. I don't know about Avon. But in any event, Rav Ami's point is, nobody dies, nobody suffers without sin. And now he's going to bring sources for that. Ein misa belo there is no death without sin. Dechsiv hanefesh hachotes hi kamus, the soul that sins, it shall die. Ben lo yisa ba'avon ha'av, the son does not bear the father's sin. Ba'av lo yisa ba'avon ha'ben, the father doesn't bear the son's sin. Sitka satzadik alav tihiyam, the righteousness of the righteous person shall be upon him. Verishas harosha alav tihiyam, and the wickedness of the wicked person shall be upon him. So, here's the apostle that states pretty clearly that it's only because of one's own sin that a person dies. Ain yisurin beloavon, and there's no suffering without transgression or iniquity, dechsiv, as the Pasuk says, ufakadati b'shevet pish'am uvenega'im avonam. I will make a reckoning with the rod of their pesha, that's a serious sin, that's what a sin that's made mamish v'vezid, and their avon with scourges or plagues or something. So, in other words, they're only going to get uh, the rod or the plague for their own sin. So that's what Ravami says. A person never uh, suffers or dies as the result of the sins of another person. Mason. So we ask Akasha and Ravami, and Akasha is going to be intended to show that a person can die without sin. Amru Malachi Ashur Slavnei Kodesh Porfu. This is a Bryce somewhere. The ministering angels said of Nekodesh before Kodesh Borchu, Rabbanu Shalom, Mipnei Ma Konasta Misa Al Adam Harishon. Why did you penalize Adam Harishon with death? Amar Lahem. So he said to them, Mitzvah Kalo Sivisiv. I gave him an, a, an easy commandment, but over Allah, and he transgressed it. Amru Lo. So the angels said back to Kodesh Borchu, Vahalo. Moshe Aaron Shekiyamu Kola Torah Kula Vamesu, but didn't Moshe and Aaron uh, uh, fulfill the entire Torah, yet they died? So, all right, Adam Arisham did a sin, but look at Moshe and Aaron. Why did you make them die? They fulfilled the entire Torah. They're perfect. Amar Lahem, so Hashem said to them, Mikra echad letzadik balarasha latov The same thing that happens to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the bad. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that's the way it is. Even people like Moshe and Aaron, who never sinned, have to die. So this is a Kasha Ravami. Ravami says, there's no death without sin. And here this price is saying Moshe and Aaron died despite their never having sinned. So Ravami answers, the Gomorrah answers for Ravami, that is, Hu da'amar kihai tana. Ravami, uh, uh, that Brysa disagrees with Ravami. Uh, that Brysa says people can die without sin. 
but it's not a kasha on Ravami, because he's following an opinion in a different price. It's a machlokas tanoim, and Ravami is taking one, uh, the, the following side. Who the Amr Kiyaitan? Ravami was going like the following Tana, the Tanya. Rabbi Shimon ben Alozar Omer, Af Moshe Baharon the Chetam Mesu. Moshe and Aaron also died because of their sin. As Shenemar, as the Pasuk says, after they hit the rock, Yan lo hemantem bi, because you didn't have faith in me, which implies, Ho hemantem bi, but if you had, had you had faith in me, Adayin lo higiyaz manchem nipater min ha'olam. Your time to depart the world would not have yet come. So, Rabbi, this Tzimach Lokas, Rabbi Shimon ben Elozar, and this other Tana, as to whether Moshe and Aaron were guilty of sin, whether they died for sin, and it's a little bit hard to you. How's the other Tana going to explain hitting the rock? But all right, that's, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Um, and Rav Ami, Einach Inami, the first Bryce disagrees with Rav Ami. The first Bryce says that Moshe and Aaron were free of sin, <clears throat> and uh, they died anyhow. But Ravami says, when I say people die, don't die, unless there's sin, that's following the opinion of Rishon and Ben So he's, he's defended himself. The Mishnah, the Gemara doesn't let him go. Mesive. So they ask another question on Ravami. There are four who died because of the advice of the snake, and we saw the Rashi, that is, they themselves committed no sins. They only died because uh, Adam and Chava sinned, and there was a decree of death on the world. Elohim, they are the following, Binyamin ben Yaakov, the Amram avi Moshe, the Yishai avi David, the Kilov ben David, the Kulhu Gemara, and all of them, there is no source in Tanakh that they were sin-free. It's all a tradition. We just happen to know this. Levar me Yishai Avi David, other than Yishai David's father, the Mefarish Beikro, about whom the uh, the, the uh, Novi says clearly that he was free of sin. He never sinned. Where do we see that? This sieve, because the Bosnian and Sefer Shmuel says, the Es Amasa Son of Shalom Tachas Yoav. Al Hatzava, I think, is the correct person. And Absalom appointed Yoav, excuse me, Absalom appointed Amasa in place of Yoav to be in charge of the army. The Amasa ben Ish, Ushmo Yisra, Amasa, this, you know, Absalom's general, was the son of, an, of a man whose name was Yisra Yisraeli. Asher Bo al Abigail Bas Nachash who had relations with Abigail, that should be read Abigal, the daughter of Nachosh, <coughs> Achos Tzeruya, the sister of Tzeruya, Ein Yoav, the mother of Yoav. So there's somebody here, Amos's grandfather was named Nachosh, and his mother was named Abigal. So the Gemara asks on that pasuk, V'chi bas Nachosh havi, was this Abigal, the sister of Tzruya, was she the daughter of Nachash? V'halo bas Yishai havi, wasn't she the daughter of Yishai? She was David Amelech's sister. Dirsiv, as it says, V'ach Yosehen Tzruya v'Abigal, their sisters were Tzruya and Abigal, and somehow you see from that that uh, she was the daughter of Yishai. So how come they're saying that she's the daughter of Nachosh? So the Gemara answers, Elabas mi shemes be'et yoshel Nachosh. She was the daughter of, um, uh, of the man who died because of the sin of the snake. She was the daughter of Yishai, but the Pasik calls her Nachosh because he only died because, not the sin of the snake, because of the advice of the snake. So the Gemara says, this is a support for the idea that Yishai was one of the four people who only died because of the advice of the snake and not because of anything he did personally. All right, now, tying it back up with Ravami. Mani, who does this follow? Elema tana de malachia shores. 
if you're going to say that this brisa that says only four people <laughs> died free of sin is the same Tana above it, who talked about that dialogue between Hashem and the Malachi Ashtoris, and, and he said that you know Moshe and Aaron were also free of sin. According to him, there weren't only four people who were free of sin. There should have been six. There are two names missing from the list. But it must be that this Brisa follows the opinion that said Moshe and Aaron did sin. Rabbi Shimon Elozer. And we see, even according to Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, that there are people who die without sin and suffer without sin because this Brisa, according to everybody, says four people died without any sin. So how can Rabbi Ami say nobody dies without sin? Well, Tiyuf to Rabbi Ami, and isn't this a refutation of Rabbi Ami? And the Gemara says, Tiyufta, yes indeed, Riyami is refuted. So, getting back to where we started. So what does that mean for the realm? Ah, that's the question. Look, look, this Gemara says there were four people, maybe six people, who died without sin. How can the Rambam say every single individual has a virus and mitzvahs? Right? Not everybody has a virus. Let me speak out to you the Tosos on this Gemara. Tosos here asks, there's this Bryce that says four people died only because of the advice that the snake gave Chava. So Tosos asks, but isn't there a Pasuk in Kohelis that says, Ein Sadik Ba'oretz Asher Yaseh Hatov Velo Yachtov. There's no Sadik on earth who just does good and doesn't sin. That's a Pusik in Kohelis. So how can this Brisa argue on that Pusik? That's Tosos' question. And Tosos answers, that's the general rule. That doesn't mean there, there aren't exceptions. When it says, what? And when it says that there's, there's nobody who, uh, who, who's a Tzadik who doesn't sin, that's um, you know, by uh, almost everybody. If there are only four exceptions, right? You can still say the rule, but there are exceptions to the rule. Okay, so Tosos is like Rashi over here. Rashi is the one who said that this Gemara implies that these four people didn't sin. And Tosos says, but there are four who did? Yeah, well, the, I mean, the, the, the Gemara says that, uh, that such people don't exist. He meant, uh, it says the Pusik, the Pusik means such people almost don't exist. Now, there is a safer called Hanosein Imre Shefer, written by Rabbeinu Eliyahu ben Chayim, also known as the Ra'anach, a very prominent rov in Turkey in the early 17th century. So, he looks through this Gemara, and he sees Tosis' Kasha. The Gemara says four people never sinned. Yeah, but the Pusik says everybody sins. And he says, Tosus' uh, answer that it means almost everybody sins. He says that's Dolchak and it's contradicted by Gomorrah's. He doesn't accept Tosus' answer. So he says, he gives a completely different shot in this Gomorrah. Because he has to, you know, he can't live with this contradiction. The Bryce says four people didn't sin, and the Pusik says everybody sins. And then he has answer, almost everybody sins, no, 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 that's not what it means. So he says, we, mis we misunderstood this Gemara. The first thing you start out with is the Pusik and Kohelis. Yeah, you start with the Torah Shemitzah. Our first assumption is all people must sin. That is, every, every human being sins. Okay, then what did Rabbi Ami mean when he said there's no death without sin? I mean, everybody sins. What do you mean there's no death without sin? Right? What's his chiddush? Everybody, he's telling me, you know, he's telling me what the Boston Goelos is. The Rana explains, you know what Rabbi Ami is saying? Rabbi Ami is saying, yes, of course everybody sins. But there are some exceedingly righteous people 
who, who sins may not, you know, they may be so trivial that, okay, they deserve to get some punishment for it, but they don't deserve to die, right? Just because a person sins doesn't mean he deserves to die. When Rabbi Ami says there's no death without sin, what he means is you will never die unless the sins that you have committed are serious enough that you personally deserve death. Of course you're going to sin. Everybody sins. But, you know, uh, one time the guy, he didn't answer Ami to a brothel or something. You're not gonna, he's not going to die for something like that. If somebody dies, it's because on account of their own personal record, they did a sin or sins that are serious enough that they deserve to die. That all of these kashas on the Gomorrah are asking on that. They're saying, no, how do you know? Maybe you see that a Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't kill people, you know, kills people, even though their sins might not be serious enough that they personally are high of Misa. And this Brysa, about four people, they died on account of the advice of the snake. The Gemara is saying, yes, all these four people sinned. You know, that, no, the, the Pasuk says, all human beings sin, right? But these four people, it's a kasha on Ravami, because these four people didn't die because of their own Averas, on their own Averas, they didn't, they deserved to suffer a little bit. They didn't deserve to die. The only reason they died was because the bad advice that the snake gave Chamaba. So how can you, Ravami, say that everybody dies because of their own personal record? Right? And Ravami and the Gemara says, you're right, Ravami's refuted. All people sin, right? Uh, even Ravami agreed to that, but a person can die even though their sins are so paltry that they don't they aren't personally high of Misa. Yes? Is this a possible answer for um, the Gemara that says that anyone who says that David sinned uh, that Gemara? Like you yeah, that, that certainly relates. That happens to be the same sugi here. If you read the, the down the same Amud, that that's that's this Gemara Shabbos Daf Nun Hey or Nun Bo, whatever it is. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so you, the answer that whatever he did, whatever you could say that he did, fellow Shem or something like that, it's surely an approach. <clears throat> like okay, you can you, you can use it. Uh, the Rana himself didn't take it that far, but you can you can certainly uh, try to apply it. Now, yes. I thought I thought that Gemara was just saying because he did because he did the shuva. That's the standard shot. It was but he's saying there might be like, 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 like Rashi and Tosfos like, because his his, his the, because his era wasn't wasn't big enough because he was because he wasn't you might on, say that he wasn't on such a high level that this mattered so much. Okay, you you can apply these ideas to that Gemara. Now, it's not only the Ra'ana who understands this Gemara that way. The Abarbanel does too. Let me tell you what the Abarbanel says. The Abarbanel asks a question in his commentary on Sefer Bracious. Yaakov and his family had to go into exile in Egypt. He asks the question, what did they do to deserve that? That's a punishment. Exile is not something you want. All right? it's a punishment. Well, what, what, what did they do to deserve that punishment? He says, well, the brothers of Yosef, it's obvious, they sold, they sold Yosef. And even Ruvain, who wasn't part of the sale, he hated Yosef. And Yosef also, he spoke Lashon Hara. And Yaakov also, he made mistakes. He, he showed favoritism to, to Yosef, and he caused his sons to be jealous. But the big problem is Binyamin. What did Binyamin do to deserve exile? Nothing. Nothing. He didn't do anything to stop all the situation. Was he he was a little guy. He's going he's to tell his father and his big brothers what to do. Okay. I don't yeah, think he's, he's responsible. So he says something very terse. He says he was he went he had to go along with the brothers <coughs> and Arba Mesu Remember, Benjamin's one of the four who died who's sin free, right? 
Binyam is getting it even though he doesn't deserve it. What? When Aram Esu Be'et Yosham Afash. Binyam had to, when Adam and Chava ate the fruit of the tree, so it's decreed that Binyam is going to go to Egypt, what's going on? You know what he means? We saw this Rambam. The Rambam says there's judgment on an individual, there's judgment on a country, and there's judgment on the whole world. The Barbanel says it's love dafka, there's judgment on a country. There's judgment on a community, a family. The family of Yaakov, it was decreed on them not as individuals, as a unit. This family is being judged. This family has to go into exile. Benjamin, you as an individual are innocent. Of course you are. But you get judged as an individual. You get judged as part of a community. And you get judged as being part of the world. Okay? So, as an individual, clean slate. But you're being judged as part of a community. Your community is Chayev. It means you, you get punished, even though, even though uh, you personally are innocent. Okay? So, after all this... After, oh, and then, that sheds light on what is meant by Arba Mesu Be'et Yoshel Nochosh, according to the Ra'anach. Remember, according to the Ra'anach, the Gemara is saying, even though you personally... Your sins, which have to exist in a human lifetime, even though your sins don't warrant the death penalty, you're going to die because of the sin with the snake. How does that work? It works like the Ramam says. As an individual, you're innocent. As a member of a community, maybe you're innocent too. But when Adam and Chava sinned, their entire world was judged as well. Are you part of this world? Well, the world was judged as a place where everybody's got to die at the time that Adam and Chava did the sin. So, you, these four people as individuals, they don't deserve it? Good, as individuals, they don't. Are they part of the world? Yes. The world is a guilty world. The world is a place where people have to die until Mashiach comes. Okay? So, as part of the world, they're Chayav Misa. Now, we have no problem with the Rambam anymore. The Rambam learns the Gemara like the Ranach and the Abarbanel. According to Rashi and Tosfos, the Gemara says four people died as a result of the snake because they didn't sin at all. Right? But that's only according to Rashi and Tosfos. According to the Abarbanel, the Ranach, and presumably the Rambam, the Gemara is saying Everybody sins. Sure, that's the, that's the Pesach and Kohelis. The first sentence of the Rambam is just stating the Pesach and Kohelis. There's no man on the earth that's so righteous that he never sins. Kol echad v'echad yeshlo avonos. And the, the Gemara that says four died, be'et v'shom nochash, that's saying these four people deserve death only as part of the unit, which is the world. As individuals, they don't deserve death. But they have a virus. Everybody's got a virus. The Rambam is in the clear. Yes. What is the Tiyifta on Rav Ami? It says Yeshmi, the Tiyifta is Shmamina, Yeshmi is the Lord. So Rav Ami's Shita is that you'll, you will not die unless you as an individual are Chayav Misa. And we're showing that that's not true. By the way, good thing you reminded me. The Pnei Yeshua has a Kasha on this Gemara. Let, let's go back to the beginning of the Gemara. Amr Rav Ami. People don't die, they don't suffer unless they've sinned. And now he brings a raya from Psukim. Look at the Pasuk that he brings, Pasuk from Yechezkel. There's no death without sin. As it says, A soul that sins, it dies. Well, there you've got it. A soul that sins, dies. But he's not done yet. Ben lo yisab avon ha'av. The father does. The son doesn't bear the sin of the father. Av lo yisab avon ben. The father doesn't bear the sin of the son. Sitka satzadik alav tiyah. The righteousness of the righteous person shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked person shall be upon him. Whoa! Who needs all that? The first four psukim are your source. The sin, uh, the sin, the soul that sins, it shall die. There you've got your proof. You don't die without sin. That's a good kasha. I don't remember the Pnei Yeshua's answer. But it's only a kasha the way Rashi and Tosos understand the Gemara. If Rav Ami's point is, if an individual goes through life without sin, he will not die, 
Then you have kasha. It says the soul that sins will die, but a soul that doesn't sin won't die. Why quote the rest? According to the other Rishonim, Rambam of Arbanel, uh, Ra'anach, he's not a Rishon, but according to them, there's no such thing as a soul that doesn't sin. That when, uh, what the, the main point of Rav Ami is a person will only die because of their own personal record. A person will, a person will not die because of the record of their community or the record of the world. So the main raya is from the end of the Pasuk. A father doesn't die for the son, the son doesn't die for the father. You are on your own, you're never going to get it because you're part of some other community. According to them, it makes a lot of sense why Rabbi Ami makes this long, long quotation. Because it's the end of the Pasuk, which is the clear raya to his shitan. Yes? What do we say about Eliyahu and Nabi? Eliyahu didn't die. Did he sin? And if he didn't, I thought the world, everybody has to die. Good question. I mean, I don't, that, that, that's, I'm sure, a whole sugya as to what makes him the exception to the rule. The exception that proves the rule. I love yeah. that line. Okay. End of part one. Now, look at the source that we have here at the top of the page. It brings down the brysa outside of the context of this whole discussion. Doesn't have Rabbi Ami. All you've got here, Tana Rabbanon, top line, Arba Mesu Be'et Yashonachosh, four people died because of the snake's advice. They are the following, Binyam and Yaakov, Amram and Moshe, Yishai, Avi David, Kilo Ben David, and then the Kulu Gemara, all of this we know just from a tradition, except for Yishai, and you bring down this Pasuk about, in one place, Abigal is the daughter of Nachosh, in the other place, she's the daughter of Yishai, and the answer is, it really, she's the daughter of Yishai, and he's called Nachosh because he only died because of the advice of the snake. Okay, look at the uh, Rabbeinu Gershom here. Rabbeinu Gershom, this is the oldest Ashkenazi commentary on Shas that we have. It was written in the generation immediately preceding Rashi. It's attributed to the God of of that generation, Rabbeinu Gershon, but it's not necessarily written by him personally. In any event, look at his little comment over here. The Et Yoshel Nachosh, through the advice that the snake gave. The Eitzah Sheyomatzah Lechava, through the advice by which he advised Chava, velo mipnei chet Adam, and not because of Adam's sin. Etyo loshon etza, the word etyo means advice, kamo like the Pesach in Daniel, eto v'tam, so you see, uh, etyo means advice. What did Rabbeinu Gershom do here? Let's look at it again. They died through the advice of the snake, velo mipnei chet Adam, not because of the sin of Adam. Whoa. Up to now, we've been learning the Gemara that at Yoshel Nachash, the advice of the snake, means the sin of Adam. These four people didn't die because of anything they did personally. They died because of the advice of the snake, which means the sin of Adam. But no, Rabbeinu Gershom says, they didn't die because of the sin of Adam, they died because of the advice of the snake. Well, what's he, it's not clear what he means. What does he mean? They died not because of Adam's sin, because of the snake's advice. Well, and you can see, you know, why didn't he want to say that they died because of Adam's sin? I'll tell you why. The way he's learning the Gemara, He's saying, Ramami says, there's no death, uh, 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 it was a, misa belochet. there's no death without sin. And we're asking on him from these four people. The way Rabbeinu, Hanan, uh, Rabbeinu Gershom understood the Gemara is, if the Gemara meant that these four people died because of Adam's sin, that's not a kasha Rabbi Ami. Oh, they're dying because of sin. Right? If you want to have a kasha on Rabbi Ami, 
you have to prove that a person can die without any sin being involved at all. Right? So the Gemara is asking the Rabbi Ami, look, four people died, not even because of Adam's sin. They died because of the snake's advice. You can see that's behind, behind what he's saying. But it's still schwer. First of all, if the snake's advice wasn't a sin, then why, why does anybody have to die? If it's not a sin, why should anybody get punished? Secondly, why should people die for something that the snake did? Third, if people are already dying because of the snake's advice, how come after Adam Arishon did the sin, part of his punishment is, Kodesh Baruch Hu tells him, you're going to die. Hey, you're going to die anyhow because of the snake's advice. So, you hear? You hear the question? What did this new punishment, because he ate from the tree, he's going to die, but people are already dying because of the snake's advice, whatever that is. This is a very little Rabbeinu Gershom, but big questions. How is he understanding this come on? I think I have the key to this Rabbeinu Gershom. There is a Rashi in Masech Shabbos, Daf Kuf Mem Vav, that brings down a Medrash. Well, when a Kodesh Baruch Hu accused Chava, you know, how come you ate from the tree after I told you not to eat from it? She says, Hanafash Hishiani. The snake misled me. Now, if you change that shin in the word Hishiani to a sin, you can read it, Hanafash Hishiani. The snake married me. And there are Midrashim, and Rashi brings this down, the Darshan, the Pasuk, that way. And we learn from here that the snake had relations with Chava. Now, there is a Pirkei Derby Eliezer, very early Medrash, that takes this a step further and says something remarkable. The Pirkei Derby Eliezer says that Cain's father was not Adam Harisho. Cain's father was the snake. Ah, but it says, Vayeda HaOdom is Chava Ishto. The man knew Chava, his wife, and Vatahar, Vatelet, is Cain, is Hevel, and she conceived, and she gave birth to Cain and Hevel. So you see, the Medrash says, you know what that means? Vatayda HaOdom is Chava Ishto. Adam knew what Chava, his wife, had done with the snake, and she gave birth from the snake to Cain, and from Adam to Hevel. Cain was the son, not of Adam Arishan, according to these Midrashim, but of the snake. Okay? And Hishiani, Hanokha Hishiani, the snake misadvised me, is interpreted as the snake married me. <coughs> okay? The snake misadvised me. Hishiani, it's Eitzel, it's advice. Right? Gentlemen, you know what Ravino Gershon is saying? But if, 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 if it's the snake married me, then how is that an excuse? Just because you're married to someone doesn't mean you have to... Oh, so him. she's going to... We'll carry that further. And since I was so intimate him, with him, he polluted me. He brought me down. Okay. So, you know what Ravino Gershon is saying? When we talk about the advice of the snake, that's using nice language. The word the Torah uses for the snake's bad advice, Hishiani, is the source for this idea that Chava became pregnant by the snake. Four died because of the advice of the snake. You know what that means according to Rabbeinu Gershom? When Adam Arishan was cursed, was punished, part of his punishment is you shall die. You look at the snake's punishment, 
It doesn't say you shall die. Snakes die, don't they? You know why snakes die? Because they were never meant to live forever. Only man, according to Rabbi Gersh, only man was meant to live forever. When Chava had relations with the snake, I think there are reasonable grounds for saying that Rabbeinu Gershom holds she didn't do an Avera. She was not yet commanded not to commit adultery. The snake advised her. The snake married her. That is not an Avera. Hashem didn't say, don't do it. And I've arrived for this. Because in, if you look in the Perushim of the Bali Tosfos, three generations after Rabbeinu Gershom, four generations after, on Chumash, one of them says that because Chava became, had relations with the snake, that is why women are forbidden to have more than one husband at a time. That clearly implies that till then, Chava, Alpi Halacha, whatever it means at that stage of the world's development, but was not forbidden to have two husbands. When she had relations with the snake, when the snake advised her to use nice language, she, nobody did an Aveira. It wasn't a Chet. Now, gentlemen, all of us here are descended from <coughs> Cain. You know why? Because we're all descended from Noah, and Noah's wife, Naama, was a descendant of Cain. So according to Rabbeinu Gershom, that means all human beings have snake DNA. <laughs> okay? So now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu cursed Adam HaRishon, after you did this sin, you are going to die. Because till then, it's true that the Kayan family was going to die anyhow because of the snake DNA in them. But there are, there's the Hevel family, the Chase family. They weren't, you know, they didn't, you know, they were the descendants of Odom, not the descendants of Cain. They didn't necessarily die, right? So Kodesh Baruch says, no, from now on you're cursed. You did the sin, you're cursed. When Rabbeinu Gershom says, four people, ah, but you're only cursed, you are going to die if you sin. If somebody from the pure Hevel and Chase families never does a sin, they're not going to die. Ain miso belochet, right? From the Kayan family, you're stuck. You're not 100% from Oda, you're a little bit from the snake. You got to die anyhow, even if you're perfect sadik. So, Arba Mesu Be'et Yoshel Nochosh, Rabbi Ami, how can you say that nobody will die unless they commit a sin, right? But look, these four people died without any sin involved. They didn't sin, and their parents didn't sin, their ancestors didn't sin, because when the snake impregnated Chava, neither of them was committing a sin. Chava hadn't yet eaten from the fruit, right? So here you have people dying who are free of the taint of any sin. That's Rabbeinu Gershon. Yes. What about the sin of bestiality? Is that, is that wasn't part? it? Wasn't part of it? It wasn't given yet. So then the uh, only mitzvah she had at that time was don't eat from that tree. That's the only avera she could have done, and she did it. Yeah. Isn't there a major that says that Adam. Uh, had relations with like all the animals or something like that? Yeah, okay, so you see that wasn't forbidden yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rabbi, yes. The ending of the Gershon, where he quotes the the Atio coming from a Pasuk in Daniel, right. that, I don't know the Pasuk, but doesn't that, uh, does, it says Lashon Eitzah, so it's apparently not Hisiani or. Ah, you see, but let me make that clear. Why does he call it Eitzah? He's using nice language. How do we, what is the source in Chumash for this idea that the snake had relations with Chava? You take the Pasuk Hishiani, he misadvised me, he gave me bad Eitzah, and you interpret it as Hishiani, he married me. Now, 
The Gemara doesn't want to say, the Bryce doesn't want to come out and say, four people died because Chava had relations with a snake. You, want to, you don't want to come out and say that. What's, how do you allude to that? Because of the advice, quote unquote, of the snake. Because we learn out that the Chava had relations from the Pasuk, Hishiani, which means, means misadvised. So it's a euphemism. Why, okay. didn't, why the Bryce and the Gemara couldn't just say through the misleading of the use the same language? It would have it would have been backhanded, but it still would have. I guess they wanted to be more backhanded. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So now this with this interpretation of the Gemara, you have two fringe benefits here. There's a question that the Marsha asks in in uh, Baba Basra. You know, according to the way Rashi and Tosos learn the Gemara, Arba Mesu Be'at Yoshanafash, four died because of the advice of the snake, means four people died all, not because of any sin that they did, only because Adam Arishon did an Avera. And there was decreed death. So, so Marsha asks, well, why don't you say Arba Mesu, mesu Be'at Adam Arishon? Why talk about you know, round about the advice of the snake, save for the sin of Adam. According to Rabbeinu Gershom, no kasha. They didn't die. The Gemara is daft in that saying they died because of the sin of Adam. If they died because of the sin of Adam, that wouldn't be a kasha on Ravami. Ravami says, no death without sin. Ah, you're dying because of the sin of, the sin of Adam. That's not a kasha on me. You're dying for a sin. I have to come up with a reason why people die without any sin being involved at all. So we've taken, according to Rabbeinu Gershom, we have taken claim care of the Marshal's kasha. I have another question on the Gemara. Four people died because of the advice of the snake. That means that these people were tremendous tzaddikim. According to Rashi and Tosos, they never did any sins. According to the Rambam and the Barzanel, the sins that they did were so paltry that they didn't deserve to die. Yishai was a very chash of a yid, to say the least, right? So, how, what title do you give him? Snake. Uh, Abigail, the daughter of the snake. Who's the snake? Yishai. Very nice way to talk about Yishai's perfection. He's a snake, right? According to Rabino Gershon, yeah. You can't get around it. Any human being since the flood, part of him is a snake. We, we're, we're not, we, we, you, you can't get around it. The Pulse is telling you that Yishai, you know, there was some quality about him that was snake-like. And that's why he had to die. Yes? I thought the whole point was that since they didn't sin, they were outside of the Nahash DNA or something like that, they became this like new... No, like, no. Because of the, the snake didn't die because of its sin. The snake died because that's what it was created. And since we, all human beings, to some degree, are descended from the snake, because of that, they must die. Another question. Why isn't anybody else called that? Uh, because you're only called that if the Torah wants to make a point. You're normally you're the daughter of, of your father. You give your father's name. But the Torah did want to let us in on the fact that Ishai was such a tremendous guy. Okay, gentlemen. Have a good shot.